Hello, this is Cheryl, and I have designed this um, Crazy Heart pattern with my Glass Eye 2000 software, which you can get a trial version of if you click the link um, below. Um, I'm going to use these pattern shears, and they cut out a tiny piece between the um, pieces, which will allow for the foiling to go between. Um, so we cut out the pattern perimeter first and then cut each individual piece out with the pattern shears. I know this pattern's a little bit late. It's a week it's the weekend after uh, Valentine's Day, but everyone loves hearts and hearts are always in style. So I figured I'd put it up anyway. So here we go. We're cutting out our pattern pieces and putting them in piles according to color. So I decided to use a transparent um, red glass. It's got a seed texture to it uh, for three of the pieces. And this pattern I'm going to put up on my website um, for a minimal fee of like a dollar to download and it'll be in PDF um, format and easy and simple to use. So I'll try and get that up this week. So I'm marking out my pattern pieces by, by going around them with a, a silver Sharpie on the dark colors. And a, I usually use a black Sharpie um, for the lighter colors. And I'm also numbering my pieces so I know where they go according to the pattern. These are a pair of um, running shears, a uh, running plier, sorry, and they have a curved edge. And the side with the indicator in the middle goes on the top. And all I'm doing is like popping my glass just a little bit so I hear just a little crunch. And then I go to the other side so that that sharp curve will not turn into a straight cut and then you know ruin some of my my glass I to try to reserve it, as much of my glass as I can because it's expensive so here I'm using a piece of I think it's a champagne color has a little texture to it um, and of course with the textured glass you need to cut on the opposite side so don't forget to turn your pattern piece over to do that uh, you need to use your cutting oil with your um, glass cutters, and they are not glass cutters. They, they simply score the glass. So going through this rather quickly, this is like eight times speed of normal speed. Um, take your time cutting your glass. If you want instruction on cutting glass, I can put a link up at the top to another video that goes a little bit more into detail about it. So then for my third color, I went with a um, chip glass and it has like a frosty color, a frosty pattern on one side. So I'm flipping my pattern pieces over because I'm working on the reverse side of the glass as far as cutting it. Take your time cutting. You want to get as close to the marking as you can because you don't want to have to grind too much off. So now we go to the grinder and here I'm just simply um, smoothing off the edges, getting rid of any of those little glass burrs or sharpies that can po poke you and cut you. I usually like to round off my tips a little bit so that they're not super pointy and I make sure that um, I go down, you know, I grind off the marker. Then I go back and forth from one piece to another and I make sure that my pieces fit together nicely. 
Um, so you go back and forth, trimming off, you know, here and there to make sure that everything fits nice and tight. And we won't go through the whole thing, and I'll skip ahead um, after you've seen a little bit of it. So I'm going back and forth from my, my table with my other pieces, making sure that they fit nicely. So here they are. They're all ground and fit up nicely. And for those of you who don't have a table foiler, I'm going to foil these by hand. And all you have to do is make sure that you strive for equal Make sure the glass is in the center and you have equal sides from side to side. Um, what's exposed is equal, as you can see, from one side to the other. Then you want to overlap by about a quarter of an inch and cut it off. Some people rip it off. I like to cut it off. And then gently fold over the exposed edges, the overlapped edges, onto the glass. That's why you want to try strive for um, it to be equal on both sides. And fold it over. And the corners you want to fold in one side and then fold the other side over top of that with um, deep curves like the inside curve there sometimes rubbing the foil and warming it up will help lay those edges over top over the side without breaking them sometimes they'll crack open then you gotta have to put some more foil over top so now I'm burnishing my edges um, burnishing the sharp points of the foil down before I go further but I I burnish the whole edges and then um, do each side and rubbing the foil onto the glass um, will help prevent your foil from lifting when you're soldering you want to make sure that it's down really nicely and I try and smooth out my edges because the foiling is what is going is the base for your soldering I'm using a plastic fid um, but you can also use a pencil or a piece of wood a wooden dowel that all works just fine And if you see any little overlaps that need trimming, like in this spot here, I'm trimming off just a tiny bit so that it doesn't show up in my solder work. And now we have all our pieces foiled and we're ready to tack the piece together with some solder. So get your piece lined up how you want it. I'm using, um, I believe I'm using 50-50 solder right now, but you can use 60-40. I've used that. It's fine too. Don't forget to flux. Without your flux, your solder won't work. So basically right now I'm going to tack my pieces together. And it's just putting a little drop of solder out on the, it, the intersecting pieces just to hold them in place. So 
So now on this particular piece, I'm going to be putting some hobby um, came around it. So I don't want to go all the way completely to the edge. I want to leave a little bit of a space so I can work with the a hobby came. So I've tacked the piece up well and now I can continue with the soldering. And the key to soldering, for me at least, is to um, try for smooth, uninterrupted strokes of the soldering iron with a continual flow of the solder. Um, and if you don't get it right the first time, you can go back over it. And there's a point where you need to not not focus on one particular spot for too very long because it will um, flow through to the other side when it gets too hot. So move around a lot and you can play with your solder until you get it the way you like it. But again, the key for good solder lines is continual, um, non-hesitant strokes of the soldering iron will give you a nice smooth line. So I'm just tinning the edges now um, just to cover the copper foil with solder and now I'm going to come in with the hobby came. This is the hobby came. It has a nice flat um, edge for the outside and it's it's got a little bit of a U-shape to it so that the glass will fit inside it. So all I'm going to do now is fit the hobby came to the piece and cut it to size. And what the hobby came does for the piece is it gives it a nice smooth edge around it. It gives it more structure and it makes the piece a little bit heavier. So I'm just trying to get an approximate length here. So hey, please give me a like and um, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, subscribe to my channel so that you can catch all my my um, subsequent videos um, when they come out. And if you join my community, I thank you for that. If you've already joined, I thank you as well. I hope everybody had a nice thank uh, Valentine's Day.
So the idea is you want to get a nice tight fit around your piece. And now we need to tack it in place. So you don't want to get solder on the outside of this. Um, so the key is to stay inside the lip of it with your solder. So I'm just holding it in place with a pin there so it won't move on me. And then I'm going to solder a little drop of solder at, at the intersections of my solder lines. And it's just on the lip of it. And don't forget your flux. You need your flux. <laughs> I'm using my fid to push it against the piece nice and tightly, holding it and soldering it at the same time. So now I have to trim off my excess and you'll see that it won't curl in because it's too long and I need to trim some off. And I'm going to use my fid to push that piece down in. And solder the last piece. So now you could leave it just as it is, but I like to uh, put a bead of solder around the lip of the hobby cane. And again, you're trying not to get any solder on the outside because the whole point is you want this nice smooth finish on the outside, on the edge. So the key, the, tr the idea is to get a nice smooth um, bead on there and then you have to fussy solder I call it fussy soldering the um, 
seams into it so that they're nice and smooth and flowing. So I will play with my solder until I get it the way I want it. And remember, you can't play in one area too long or this auto will seep through to the other side. Continuing with the beading around the edge. And again, I'm trying to get my lines perfect. I left it for a little while so it would cool down and I could start working it again. Take your time. Make sure you have enough solder in the seam. You're looking for nice, rounded, smooth solder seams. Okay, so we flip it over and we do the same thing on the other side and we'll go through this real quick.
So if you have any questions, put them in the comments. I'm happy to answer your questions. Um, all the materials and tools that I use are in the description below. And I have links to them if you're um, looking to buy something um, for, your, for your hobby. And see something that I'm using that you might want to use. Um, if you do buy through those links, I am an affiliate with Amazon. And I make a small commission um, at no further, no, oh, no additional charge to you. It just helps support my channel and um, it's a link to the product for them. So if you do purchase through my links, I thank you for that. So I'm just tinning my um, jump ring here and I've done, I've done videos on adding the jump rings um, but basically you just really want to use a soft touch um, you don't want to put too much heat on that wire because it will fall off on you and you'll have to start all over again so try to just dot and dab um, the soldering iron on there don't leave it on there for any length of time or it will fall off and I just play with it until I get the look that I think I like um, trying to have a neat look about it, professional look, and um, just take your time and do it. Um, take as long as you need. Just remember, don't heat it up too much or your jump ring will fall off on you, which has happened to me many times. So don't forget to give me a thumbs up uh, that helps with the um, YouTube algorithms so that my video will be seen by more people and uh, share my video with others that you might think would like it. Appreciate that. So as you see, the piece has a little bit more weight to it. It's uh, structurally a little bit more um, sound because of the hobby came. Gives it a little bit more professional finish to it. So now all we have to do is clean it up. I use Dawn dish detergent and I scrub it and get all the little nooks and crannies and clean that out and then I give it a polish. So here's the finished product. Um, it looks so pretty in the sunlight and I hope you um, like this video. Again, please give me a thumbs up and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you. Bye-bye.